So welcome back to Just a Printer. Already printed a bunch of covers of a couple different books here. Have a color book printing here actively. Gonna be running those. I have about 2,000 black and white booklets, a couple different types running here. That'll be running a good bit of the day. And got some perfect bound books here. These are actually newsletters. These are actually already, they already have addresses printed on them. So, anywho, welcome back. Uh, if you're new here, my name's Dan. This is Just a Printer. And uh, if you're interested in printing or just like watching me do some work, you're in for a treat. Okay, so for the third time I had this jam. I wrote it down here, J7572 on the 1200. And it's as I'm doing uh, booklets on the saddle stitcher here. Um, so I Googled it and it said it was bundle press sensor. And I just thought, well, before I make a service call, I'm gonna come in here and take a look. This is the bundle press. And see how loose that is? And I saw here, there's two screws. One screw there, one screw on the bottom. But that should be a lot tighter. And I think that's probably why it's not, uh, it's not working. So we'll tighten that up and uh, print some booklets here. rotates. I think it's fixed. It was jamming like immediately there for a little bit, right before I tighten those screws up. Seals the top, the bottom, folds it over, and seals the center.
It's a pretty neat machine. It takes a roll of this plastic film. It's just one sheet on a roll. And it comes up through, folds it over on itself here. So it has like a little envelope. And as you put the book or the magazine in there, it drops down. It seals the top right here and seals the bottom and then it drops out. It's all automatic. Big time saver. So we used to hand insert and seal. This thing saves a lot of time. All right, I turned the binder on earlier. It's all warmed up. Takes eh, maybe about an hour for this thing to come up to temperature. Just topped off the adhesive there. This thing's great. There are really two numbers I got to enter in here, and we should have a pretty much sellable product. So you take the overall length of the cover, 13 and 3 quarter, it's already in there. Shoot, maybe I already set this thing up. It's six and a half. Actually, it's already set up from the last job, the other job that I did earlier on here, last week I think, uh, was a six by nine. And I make the covers so that as long as I'm doing a six by nine book, there's no changes, which is real nice. Let's see where it lands. like to see. It's perfectly centered. Okay, that was just bagging these. These are all foreign, going to Canada and Switzerland. Postage is already on there. And it puts a poly bag on it. So that machine makes real quick work of that. Now we gotta do all the domestic. Okay, so it jammed again and the screws are loose. So I'm gonna tighten it back up and then after I'm done running the job, I'll put some JB Weld on them or some Loctite so they don't back out. Okay, so I was talking to my technician the other day, and uh, he told me that with the 3070 now, what Konica's doing is putting developer in with the toner, and I'm assuming that's why the toner is so much more expensive on the 1070 to 3070, uh, and 20 between there, so the 10, 20, and 30 generation, uh, which is really awesome because that means that your developer is going to basically replenish uh, and you get a lot longer of a run in between. But I'm just curious because that's got to mean that uh, there's little bits of metal in there. So I have a magnet and I just dumped some toner here from the 3070. Sure enough. There's metal in there. It's not a lie. So, if I were to dump out some uh, some toner from a uh, from the C6500, there wouldn't be little steel fines in there. So, I want to do that. I'm curious. Okay, here's some magenta from the C6500. Yep, that's just toner in that one. Cool. 
So that's pretty interesting. In case you didn't know, developer is a mixture of multiple things, uh, but there's steel in there, like fine powder. Uh, so that's why I used a magnet to see if there was any in there. Uh, but that's neat. It's old technology. It's been around for a while. Nuvera, uh, Xerox has been using it. That's the way our Nuvera was. It had uh, developer and toner mixed together. Um, so yeah, cool. Just in case you're curious where to put staples in this thing, it says add staples to right stapler. And I got this right here. This is the right one, obviously. Snap her back in there. And we should be back in business. About 2,000 booklets today, so. Oh, left stapler too. Oh, my bad. Well, I guess they both need them. That's nice when it's like that. They're both running out at the same time. This thing is probably backing out. It's covered in oil. So, cleaning it with alcohol probably be enough to hold it in place. But, I like to do more than enough. So, I'm going to put a little. Uh, not Loctite, JB Weld on there. No kidding. JB Weld probably saved me thousands and thousands of dollars over the years. See all that oil that was on the screw? I mean, this could actually be bad because if I ever need to get that off, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. But the nice thing about Loctite or like super glue, things like that, when you use it on metal, if you ever have to break the bond, all you got to do is heat it up. So just simply taking a lighter to it will uh, burn the adhesive and deactivate it. And I'm gonna put so little on this, so. But that should work. Okay, that'll do it. Put another little dab on there. Good for another, shoot, 
I should try and look that up. I'd like to know how many booklets this thing made. Thanks for watching. Always something to do here. Always something to fix. Always something to uh, clean up. Always something to print. So make sure you uh, like the video if you like it. Put in the comments the good, the bad, and the ugly. I guess that's it. Have a good one. See ya.